you yes, know? I know. I mean, if you've got a working system, why change it? Yeah, because, you know, if it's working, it doesn't fit a Land Rover. <laughs> Here we go again. We'll do another oil change on our Land Rover Discovery 4. And not only that, we're converting it to 5W40 C3. The same stuff we put into our Land Rover Discovery 3 about two or three weeks ago. And before you complain how this is going to be some boring oil change again, remember if we would have a Toyota, that's all you would see. That and making coffee. And by the way, we're also going to change the transfer case oil and the rear differential oil in this video and we show you what to put in. Yes, hope you enjoy the video. So it's a mall crawler's turn today. You see that here? Oh my god. This should be an easy jump, which we do really quickly, and it shouldn't take a full Saturday, okay? And this time we're gonna convert to 5W40 and not put in what they say on here 5W30. Okay. Do you hear the sound of technology? Oh, it just stopped. Where did I just put now my oil cap? You actually here. Oh, there. What okay. would you do without me? Yeah. He's got the wrong sticker on. <laughs> so now come down here for a change so we get good footage. Okay, now it's going to get all cozy in the pit. Oh, that's yeah. just a chess ball yeah. in the yeah. kind of situation. I was looking for that. <laughs> what already sucks on a Discovery 4 is that they replace these nice bolts to Torx. Oh my God. Plus, I have to use a spanner. On the Discovery 3, all you need is a 13 millimeter. Yes, they, I, make things, they make things more complicated. I don't think they expect Discovery 4 owners to work actually on their own car. You think mall crawler owners don't work on their own car? No, I don't, but Land Rover does. See, there's even now a long bolt in here with a standoff. Oh my god. Why would you do something worse than in your previous vehicle? It's also more expensive. Yes, no. I know. I mean, if you've got a working system, why change it? Yeah, because, you know, if it's working, it doesn't fit a Land Rover. <laughs> These are small things, okay? But as someone who works on this car, you notice this kind of stuff. It's okay, now we're back to Torx, and I gotta take these off. Ah, don't let it... And the thing is quite heavy for a mall crawler. This is typically the point where some people say, oh, you got to suck it out through the stoop up in the engine bay. Okay. Oh, oh, no. no, you don't. You want to, you want to drain your oil over the drain plug. And the reason is this makes you look at your engine down here. Okay. And then you can talk to it. You can see how it's doing. And oh, this it's is, wet. This is important. What the hell? This is not wet. This is shiny. Oh, There's okay. A drain plug right here. Why is it not at the bottom? Um, because it's a Land Rover. If it oh. would be on the bottom, it would be easy. Then any Toyota driver would know how to do. I always get some stupid comment, whatever I do. I got myself some tea today. The Discovery 4 TDV6 has a different oil filter concept than the Discovery 3. You gotta turn six full turns to drain it. One. Twelve. Does six. it say so in the handbook? Yes, it says six full turns. Then it says wait two minutes. What? Okay? So it can drain the oil out of the oil filter housing um, into the oil pan. What we just noticed, we have a crack in our oil pan. Can you see that? So he refuses to use this one because we can't inspect the oil. Good enough reason. Okay, so I gotta improvise. So I'm using a bucket. Not the best thing in the world because whenever I try to improvise using anything to do with oil, usually it ends up in a big oil spill. And I hope this is not gonna splatter onto the frame now. Oh my God. You see? That is terrible, okay? On a Toyota, this would just not happen. 5W30, same consistency like water. Yeah, of course. Anybody can see that oil drain. There's not enough room down here and I'm in the way. He wanted me to come down here. Okay. O-ring here? Did you get a new one? Of course not. Oh, Look. it even sounds like water. Got a viewer's comment out of South Africa. I'm sorry if I forgot the name, but we get so many comments. The guy said, 
The Kestrel Oil Finder for the Discovery 3 in South Africa lists 5W40 as the standard oil. I verified that. It does. It's 5W40, A3, B3. 5% of the viewers comments who saw that 5W40 is no good idea. The other 95% kind of agreed or at least did not disagree. But there was the typical 5% who said, oh, you can fill water in and I run the 5W30 and my engine is all good and running real smooth. That's fine. You can run 5W30. We did also, but we decided now to convert. Converting to 5W40 is not wrong. Unfortunately, the LR4 is listed only with 5W30. So we are violating now that specification. Yeah, and it's and question I, card. Okay. How are we going to get that off now? Um, yeah, I didn't think of that when I put it on. Yeah, the oil pan is much easier to get off on my car. Oh yeah, your car has so many advantages over a Discovery 4. I hate it when people say the Discovery 4 is the better vehicle. From a maintenance point of view, dropping this car definitely down a bit. That is usually when an oil spill happens. Oh, come on. There's the water to the Waldo's World Spec. Click, click. Okay. Need my magnet. And we're going to take... With the oil again. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if the thing was clean. <laughs> of course, you got to make sure it's clean ahead of time. You just dipped it in like this? Yeah. That is what you call a false reading. Oil we're going to look for bearing chips in the oil filter. If you want to sell this to a Toyota driver, you need to inspect it first. Okay. Kind of important when I pull this filter out is that I don't drop all the oil you. here into the engine wheel, okay. taking this filter out. And I spilled quite a little bit. <sighs> yeah. What? Yeah. Fuck. There is a big difference between the Discovery 3 and the Discovery 4 oil filter housing. Here on the Discovery 3, you know you have to put your filter in and you plug this little hole. You plug that stud from the filter into the hole. Versus on the Discovery 4, this is not necessary anymore. There's a little mechanism here, what you push down when you install the filter, and that closes the drain hole. So when you loosen the filter, it releases this valve, and that lets your oil drain, and that's why you have to wait those two minutes. So that is a little bit of an improvement, because now you don't need to orient your filter in here, and you don't have that risk of missing that orientation, because the guy in the workshop is stupid, and that could wreck your engine. Oh my god. Yeah, look how rusty that piece is. That is my diesel pump. It's like new. Here, I want to explain the difference between the oil filter from a Discovery 3 engine, 2.7 liter TDV6, to the Discovery 3 3.0 TDV6. Ours is SDV6, which is only a change in mapping. Oh. Here, this is the Discovery 4, and you can see when you pull the filter out, it comes out with the housing. The same thing on the Discovery 3. You pull it out, it comes out with the housing. But there is a big difference in the installation. When you install the filter in the Discovery 3, you actually install the filter in the oil filter housing first, and then you put the cap over it. You have to orient this little plug, which is just a closure plug. It, I know it looks like it has a hole, but it doesn't. And this closure plug plugs up the drain hole of the oil filter housing, versus on this one I showed you, there's a little mechanism inside, which you release by loosening the filter up. In the Discovery 4, I have to install the filter first in the filter housing cap. And then I take the filter housing cap and screw it into the oil filter housing. At least according to the manual, it goes in here first. I pull it out now and here on this one, it's really easy. It's not stuck. I change, of course, the O-ring, which you have seen in our channel about the same amount of time as you see other people making coffee in their videos. Yes. So there's the old one. Why in the world would you make in your later, more powerful engine the oil filter only half as big. Why would you do something like this? This is the wrong direction. It's so obvious that this makes the engine worse. So all this is extremely easy, easier than on a Discovery 3. Really? Yeah. Goes on here. And now I can put this back into the oil filter housing don't do that on your Discovery 3 or you will have a destroyed engine. 
I only pre-fill it if I have done more serious repair, but just doing a regular oil change, I think it's not necessary on a new engine like this. Oh, why don't we just do it? No, it's not necessary. Oh my God. You're ruining my point. Does your wife also know everything better? Yes, I would have liked to pre-fill the oil filter. Did I already complain that this filter is smaller than the one from the yeah, three? You're okay, just good. Trying yep. to distract from my complaining. Yes. So we're doing an inspection of the oil filter. It's not much bigger than in Robin's Aprilia. Okay, and we look here for shiny stuff. Which is very, very unlikely that we find some. That would be coming from the crankshaft or from the camshafts or from the um, hydraulic lifters, something like that. I don't care. Because a Land Rover engine is so robust and lasts so long. <laughs> okay, and so there is nothing. Here's what we fill in. We use the 5W40 Castrol Magnatec, so the low quality brand from Castrol, DPF. DPF means it's low saps, but it still is a, a CRC3, not a C4. It has not the reduced high temperature, high shear values. So this is why I do not want to use a C1 or a C2, because those oils have a reduced HTHS value. But important is on a DPF vehicle like this, to use a low saps oil and C3 is low saps. C4 would be even better, but Castrol doesn't have a Magnatec 5W40 C4. And we fill in the full five liters. I want to mention he did not pre-fill the oil filter. Yeah, but we are supposed to do a 0.9. It does definitely does not look like water, like the other oil. No, okay. But what we should do, what? is inspect our air filter. Did we so put it in? We put it in, of course, oh. because it was installed wrong. Remember, I explained this. See here. Yeah, that's how I would have yeah. done it. So there's the air filter. Here, I and take clean. it out. And that's an air filter after one year in Germany. Oh, it's got some color. No dust in it, yeah? No. So here, when I put this one back in now, basically this front lip, you have to make sure that lip seats perfectly. You can bolt it down, mm -hmm. see? So we did our air filter inspection like we're supposed to. Oh. What? <gasps> you almost forgot a screw. It's faster than on your car. I turn it off. I display now the oil level. Now I go to the service menu and I go oil level display. And there it says engine oil level okay. But I'm displaying this in service mode, okay? Service mode means I didn't hold the wait time, which means now when I wait here, the oil sinks down into the oil pan and that will increase the oil level. Okay, see it here? So I have to do that on level ground. So I gotta reset now the service required in 950 kilometer message. So to do that, I go into service test and then IPC instrument pack right here and there is service interval reset and please proceed and I say yes and completed. No more message. Uh, so what? I still got to mount the skid plate. I actually enjoy stuff like this. Well, I want to do some syncing still. <laughs> Yeah, I can sync off camera using three different tools. That's yeah. right. And done. I always wonder why the Discovery 4 has hoses connected to the engine mounts. So it must have adaptive engine mounts. You know what that means? No, of course it, not. It can change the stiffness of the engine mounts depending on external conditions. Ah, uh, one more thing that will break. Yeah, so it, it's a hose and that hose is connected to a valve. For example, when you go with 3000 RPM on the Autobahn, it adapts that engine mount differently, so you have less vibration in the passenger cab. That is what differentiates a Discovery from a Toyota. Yeah, see, this way it got a joint. 
Yeah. And if you plug it in all the way, it's solid. Did you know that? Oh, of course not. That's what you need on a Discovery. We should put a mall crawler sticker on here. You got away easy today. That was only like a one and a half hour repair. Yeah, it was not a repair. It was a maintenance job. Yes. Add this into my maintenance schedule app. And here is the mileage. 09718. Kilometers. 48 euros. 5. W40 C3 oil. We also put in a filter, which was... And we checked air filter. We reset service interval. Okay, <sighs> this looks good. We are going to change the transfer case fluid first. And then we're going to change the rear axle fluid because I did not find any record that this vehicle got an 80,000 kilometer fluid change. Now I always print out the specification from Land Rover before doing such a job. I always find something surprising. For example, we all know that the rear differential is filled with a fixed quantity of oil. But on the transfer case, it's actually filled to the filling plug level. Refill transfer case with re recommended fluid until the fluid level is bottom of the fill filler level plug hole. Also, we're supposed to use Shell TF0753, the only oil I trust and found with that specification is from Ravenol here. Yeah, Land Rover ATF TF0753. Most oil manufacturers do not list an oil for the transfer case. Ravenol actually does. So that's what we put in. So I got myself a new oil pan after our old one had a tear. So you all know where those plugs are? Yeah. But it's always a good idea to take the fill screw out. So you can before fill it. It's more like 95. So no, no, no. we are a little bit over at 80 is the interval. We didn't own it at any. Look, it's like brand new. Oh, it looks like you honey. Can, we can sell that to Toyota right yeah, now. It, look, it looks like maple syrup. So also note that this oil is really thin, okay? Which of course I don't like, but that's what they recommend. What's this component? Oh, that's a fuel pump. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a fuel pump. Oh, really? And, and for fuel. what? For what is that fuel pump? For the Webasto fuel heat. No, I don't know. For the fuel? Yes, for the fuel burning heater. And of course, we're violating all rules by reusing the copper washer again. The oil away. Well, you need to track it. Listen, I'm not faking the clicks. 28 Newton meters. Oh, I'm missing the most important stuff. <laughs> okay, so this is the first leader. Have you used that thing before? Yes, we have, yes, we right? Did. Put in half a liter here. Yes. Absolutely accurate. So I put this in. Oh. No problem. Oops. See, and it's already dribbling. Don't push this down. Okay. One and a half. Okay, 28 Newton meters. And this job is done. Now we got to turn the car around. What? So I wrote on the bottle, transfer case mall crawler. Whoa, stop. So first step is to get some of the dust off here. Okay, and on the drain plug. I just realized I never had this car reverts over our pit, which means I never looked underneath here. And it's bone dry, no rust, no nothing. I've got all... Oh, why are you not getting this out? Hang on. Yeah, why do you have to come down into the pit? Because... Open your fill plug first, okay? There's the fill plug. Yeah, but what about the oil canister? I put it underneath when it's broken loose. This oil, you gotta get it real close because this might be more exciting now. Uh, oh, look at that, it's like new. Yeah, I think it's new. It's like new. It's just a good differential. Look at that, there is a magnet on this plug. 
<gasps> so you don't have to do your magnet trick. Oh, and there's stuff on. There's a little bit of stuff that's almost nothing. Or are they just bubbles? Oh, it is heck now. I'm gonna fall down. Oh, major accident. <laughs> See, here is the drain pipe. Fuck! You screwed up and didn't I record up. it. That I wiped down all this slush from the drain plug. And yes, put I put it on it, my. <laughs> and then you put it on your leg. Great cleaner on your leg. There, and you can wipe it off with this. <laughs> okay. No comments. So I wonder why that is now 29 Newton meters and not 28. So I changed it now to 29 Newton meters. If you fill oil in the differential housing, you got to use high pot gear oil. Hypoid gear oil, high pot gear oil, whatever you call it. In the Liqui Moly oil finder, they actually specify 75W140 or 75W90. So of course I'm putting in the 140. Now that's the same stuff we put into the Challenger. Yes, because in my class really it's only the 90s. It's even hard to get out of the bottle. This little bottle is not so bad, I have to say. Okay, why don't you push it down once, just so you see how hard this goes. Okay. It looks easier when I'm doing it, right? And But the reason is she can't reach the bottle. It's too high up for her. <laughs> see how easy it looks if I'm doing this? Ah, uh, your arm is much longer. Do not fill the differential with lubricant up to the filler plug. The filler plug is only used to fill the differential with lubricant and not to act as a level indicator. You're supposed to put in 1.25 liters. Of course, he didn't close the drain plug. I closed the drain plug. It what? doesn't look closed. It's just a little bit oily. Yeah, but it's sticking out. It's not sticking out. It's Is it not flush? It's sticking out because it's designed to stick out. It's oh my god, that's like a stupid design. No, it's a tape and thread plug. That's the best design because you can reuse it many times. <laughs> and I'm bored. 250. And Plus a of 50. And a little bit more because there is something left in the bottle. What did you discover now? That the rims are made in Italy. Best rims are made in Italy. Really? Yes. They built good rims, they built good brakes, but they suck in drive shafts. And the fill plug gets... 29. That was an easy job, way too easy. Good Two oil best. changes in an hour. That could have been a lunchtime job. Oh, during lunchtime we actually had to fell a tree almost. <laughs> yeah. So it's not that we didn't do anything productive during lunch. Yeah. I rode on it. Rear diff, mall crawler. So now he puts it into our app. Oil change, transfer case, Ravenol. DTF one. So now we got a nice record. 30 euros, it's 70 euros on oil. What we just put in. Oh my. Land Rover would charge you probably 40 euros per liter. Here are all the service records and money we spent on the mall crawler so far. It has every little detail in it down to the wiper blades. Okay, and then I can display here statistics. Um, Euro per 100 kilometers, including gas, including tax, Insurance. everything. So it costs us 17, almost 18 euros per 100 kilometers. So 18 euros per 60 mile. Double this number if you get it done by Land Rover. Double? Yeah. Christian drove away it almost. Well, it's still working. Oh, now he's coming in with mine. I hope you remember that I have a rooftop tent on top. He wants to take out the oil filter and look at it. Oh. Those are all of Christian's handmade DIY. Yeah, but I don't think that part is in here. Maybe we gave it Fabian because he... Oh. Put this. Divorce caused by Christian. Yeah. This, this is the little plug what's on the bottom of the Discovery 3 oil filter. I show you what I'm up to. Okay. I want to put some oil into the filter housing here and see if it drains away. For some reason the car takes much longer to build oil pressure. And I'm worried that the check valve in the oil filter housing might be broken. See if it drains away. I think it's the oil pump. The new fire. The oil pump probably sucks. No, we can't 
because I'm so strong. Oh, look how clean that still looks. Definitely no chips. Look, it even still has the yellowish color. So we can reinstall this. It's looking good. So if I go in there now, oh, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. And I take this plug out so you can see the ru oil running down. Yeah, take off your hands. So that's definitely not the problem. No, it's a pump. The check valve is working. We had a so. fine oil pressure and then the last perfect working moment was before we changed the oil pump. Plus the fire pump. The suck. Yeah, so you're gonna have to spend some money for an OEM pump. Yeah, okay. I mean, you're not gonna get another fire pump. No. On Thursday, I have a meeting with Jaguar cool. and Land Rover, JLR. Oh my god, because of the new Defender. A business meeting. No, I'm not allowed to say what meeting and what it, it, it is about. I want a poster and I want a t-shirt. <laughs> Please not tell them. I want anything. I'm the bad guy. Oh, you're the bad guy. The bad. Hopefully nobody knows our channel. Just for the peace of mind, we're not losing the oil through our oil filter housing, okay? And this piece? We we'll put it in our toolbox. In your assortment of plugs. Yeah. Yep. Let's enjoy the dipstick, what the LR4 doesn't have anymore. Yes. And I just got permission to take the engine out in fall. Okay. Yes, after summer. You know. Yes, I would put in a new oil pump, but Christian doesn't want to do nope. that. Now. So Christian is annoyed. Yeah, so, so the problem is, since we did our big maintenance, maybe you guys saw that video, and we put in this fire oil pump, we do have severely low oil pressure. Even though we run 5W40, so that 5W40 kind of patched up the problem, but it didn't cure it. And in my opinion, it's very unlikely that this engine wore down between our big repair and now in only like three, 4,000 kilometers, losing its oil pressure. I think that five pump is a problem pump, but I do not have permission to take the engine out now before summer because we got so many things and trips and stuff planned. So she gave me permission to take the engine out in fall. Here's the question to you guys. Do you want us to replace that oil pump now prematurely? <laughs> yes, please. With an or OEM one. Do you want us to risk it and wait until fall when we do a full engine repair? What is your recommendation? By the way, a new oil pump is going to cost us 350 euros and it's at least a day work. Yeah, I don't care. Oh, I only have 5% battery left, so that's a good point for stopping this video. That must have been the most boring video you ever saw. But remember, before we show how to make coffee in our videos, we rather show you how to do an oil change. For the tenth so, time. So we're dropping off envelopes. Yes. What countries do you got? I've got the UK, Australia and the United States and Germany, Berlin. If you want any stickers or patches, drop Vera an email. Yes, please. I actually don't want to go home now. You don't want to go home now? That was probably our fifth or sixth oil change video and I think you really got it now how that works. But again, if it would be a Toyota channel, that's all you would see. Yeah. And making coffee. Yeah. If you like what you saw, please give it a thumbs up, think about subscribing and in any case don't unsubscribe. And we really thank our Patreons who make these videos possible every yes. week. And see you next Sunday. So we had a wildlife encounter on the Autobahn yesterday. Not quite the same as in Africa, but I think the mall crawler won. Poor birdie.